Remove them before it is too late. Welcome to another video. This video is all about NICAD batteries. Destroying motherboards. Which is very annoying. Uh, this board is... Well, I don't know, I've got it. it came with a CD drive I bought. It came with a... Uh, 48633 DX, so it's not, not all bad. Enough RAM slots to insert, blah 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 blah. Here's the battery 3.6 volt. As you can see, it's a pretty ugly looking battery. It's the same type of battery that is inside my Nixie clock. I am not looking forward to the day when that explodes and leaks. May it be a long way off yet. Now the other PC I had trouble with was the, uh, the Amstrad Mega PC. It also had a battery that had corroded a lot of the tracks on the mainboard. This particular one here though, uh, let's have a looky, isn't too bad. Hasn't gone under the board, which is a good thing. The only issue that there might be is that it's on sort of the where the keyboard connects in. And as the keyboard is uh, pretty important for the operation of the machine, it's going to be just a lot of finger crossing to hope that it works. So that's what the damage is. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the battery because it is of no use at all anymore. I don't want that on there. You don't want to touch the battery if you can avoid it with your hands. If you do, that's bad, just don't do that. Wash them really well or consult a safety manual online or something. Because uh, you don't want those chemicals on your hands. They're not good for you. I mean, look what they did to the copper traces. They turn them those awesome colors of green and blue. They really are nice colors though. So this video is all about removing that battery. And I'll just show you my method for removing them, which are applies to most other electronics when you're removing something from a board. Uh, before I stop, I'll just tell you the things that we need. Alright, so, you're going to need... Well, this is what I use, because I have them. Fresh solder. Desolder braid. Soldering iron. I also have a soldering iron stand, because the soldering iron itself is quite dangerous and thin and a damp sponge, damp, not wet, uh, I mean it is wet but it's just damp. And uh, look we'll put all these together in a second, don't forget also to get a flat blade screwdriver. Next step is removing the battery. Now a pretty important part of this is to establish where the battery is. For me it's these two prongs here. Now take your soldering iron. One good thing to do is to give the soldering iron tip after it's heated up just a bit of a brush down and you watch all the dirty come off and then tin the soldering iron with your solder to then keep it nice and new for future generations and stop you from having to buy a soldering iron every three days just wipe that solder off now Best method I found now uh, with batteries, obviously, you don't want to apply heat to them too long because uh, batteries and heat don't go together. So, what I'm going to do is add solder to the points after melting them slightly, just so by reflowing it, it pretty much makes it easier to remove. It makes the solder much fresher. And a big blob. There we go. And just clean your soldering iron off. Now we use the desolder braid, which is fantastic stuff, really. Pretty much just put it up on top of the solder you want to desolder and move your soldering iron on top of it and just push down, wiggling it.
and it will suck up all the solder. <laughs> Genius invention, really. Now, once you've done that, grab your flat blade, wedge it in under the battery, and just apply a bit of heat to the solder joints. Fingers crossed, it should just pop out. Reholster your soldering iron, lift the board away, hey presto, one battery. Nobody likes a NICAD. Looks like most of the leaking came out of the negative terminal on this one. Pretty bad looking. In terms of damage though, Not looking too bad. Another interesting thing about this particular board is that we have an external battery connector. So if only they'd use that instead. Oh well, you can't win them all. And that's how you remove a NICAD battery from a motherboard. Thanks for watching. RetroJunkie.net for more. Don't forget to subscribe either. I need more subscribers. Thanks. Is it still working? So here's the one I just removed the battery from. Um, it's quite scary really. Because there's no fan on the CPU, it is silent when you turn it on. I mean there's the power supply under there, but I can't even hear that. There's no lights, there's nothing. So I thought I'd better hook up a screen or a video card as I have and we do have some success but we got a few errors keyboard error okay I can understand that corrosion display type memory has changed yep default slider because there's no battery to remember no worries And we're dealing with a Ward Modular BIOS 4.2. 91-ish Revision B. Pretty clear about that. Um, so I'd have to go and fix up the traces on this area to get the keyboard working. Which means I could then actually do something. Uh, yeah, so, so there you have it. Works without a battery. Of course, if you disconnect it from power, you'd probably have to enter all the settings again, which would be very frustrating after a while. Um, so you can use an external battery, either using the external battery connector or where the NICAD was, but the problem is it the NICAD was a rechargeable battery. If you add normal batteries in there, it will just explode. So I've never really looked into that, personally. Um, I tend to avoid things that have NICADs where I can, because I know they're terrible. But uh, that's just, yeah, that's just so you can see that one up and up and running. Pretty good looking board. Mm-hmm, yes. Using my dirty oak VGA and controller card. Thanks for watching. Go on, you might as well subscribe.